Hello friends, have you ever wondered how Microsoft ended up with not one, but two leading DevOps toolchains, Azure DevOps and GitHub? And if Microsoft owns both these platforms and continues to invest in both these platforms, then which one should you be choosing for your projects? GitHub, which seems to be the leading open source platform enabling an ecosystem that's vibrant with DevOps plugins, Azure DevOps, which has been seasoned year on year uh, from being a, a box product to a cloud service, continuing to receive even more features as we go along. Now in this video, what we're gonna cover is the differences between the two platforms and a comparison at the service by service level. And we'll also go into the pricing, which is the important bit, right? If you're gonna go and make an investment in the platform, you wanna know how much the run and the uh, licenses uh, would equate into. So stay tuned in this video, Azure DevOps versus GitHub. So let's answer the first question. How did Microsoft end up with two DevOps platforms? Now, back in the day, Microsoft had a product called Team Foundation Server. Now, Team Foundation Server was Microsoft's application lifecycle management platform. It was a box product, a product that would ship once every two years, and customers loved it because once every two years, they'd receive a CD or an option on MSDN to download the latest version of TFS. And every six months or so, you'd receive updates, right? Updates were predominantly bug fixes and some features in them as well. So as an organization, you didn't really have to worry about upgrading your application lifecycle management tools for two years or so, unless there were security issues that needed to be addressed. Now, walking the talk on the cloud first strategy, Microsoft released their cloud hosted version of TFS in 2012, which they called as TFS Preview. Now, TFS Preview was great because you could now do ALM in the cloud in a browser without having to install the product and take on all the administration overhead that came with it. Because it was a preview, it didn't have all the features of TFS that were available on premise, but good enough to get you started. In 2014, Microsoft released uh, a rebranding of uh, TFS Preview and called it Visual Studio Online. But in addition to the name change over the two years, they've been adding a lot of features to it to, to bring it at parity with TFS. And then two years later in 2016, Microsoft rebranded the product as Visual Studio Team Services. But this wasn't merely a name change. The name change had intention. That's because the previous name Visual Studio Online was misleading. People thought of the product as Visual Studio in the cloud, you know, an IDE that they can go and code on, debug their code for but that wasn't the case. And so because of that reason, they had to drive this name change of Visual Studio Team Services. But by now the product had become significantly mature. It wasn't the monolith that TFS was. VSTS was broken down into individual services. And if I recollect uh, correctly, it was a combination of about 26 microservices, uh, seven core services offering builds, releases, projects, uh, testing, um, and, and some level of uh, analytics and reporting as well. You know, by now the product was really becoming mainstream. Customers started loving the whole thing and it was really truly a DevOps platform that was competing in the market. But in 2018, Microsoft went out and acquired GitHub. And this is how they ended up with two really niche and market leading DevOps platforms. Now, Visual Studio Team Services was rebranded to Azure DevOps Service and Azure DevOps Server. And the reason for doing that was because every cloud platform had its own DevOps tooling. Look at AWS, AWS DevOps, look at GCP, GCP has its own DevOps. And therefore, to provide uh, a DevOps tool set that was cloud centric, removing the barriers on doing DevOps in the cloud, Microsoft rebranded their own product, which was originally called TFS Preview and then VSO from VSTS to Azure DevOps Service. So this is essentially how they ended up with two products. Now GitHub was acquired by Microsoft for a whooping $7.5 billion in 2018. Wow, DevOps tools are really expensive. But as we all know, GitHub was born in the open source. It was originally a Git hosting platform that allowed developers to have hosted Git repos, which was then which then started having a vibrant community around it. And that vibrant community really co-created the platform. And it went from being just 
a Git, a Git repository hosting platform to a, an open ecosystem that provides everything from DevOps to anything that you can think of. Now that Microsoft has two products and they're investing in both the platforms and the teams are co-developing both the platforms, there's a lot of synergy in features that you start to see up on GitHub and some of the features that already exist on Azure DevOps. Uh, a lot of this is about enabling integration and simplifying the experiences that customers go through. But the, in truth, there are still two products and you're probably not gonna go and set yourself up in two products, right? So which product do you choose? Do you go ahead and choose Azure DevOps or do you go ahead and choose GitHub? Now let's uh, go through a comparison of how GitHub compares with Azure DevOps on a service by service basis. So let's do a very quick service by service comparison between Azure DevOps and GitHub. Azure DevOps has Azure boards. GitHub has GitHub issues and GitHub projects. Azure DevOps has Azure repos, and Azure repos can be used for hosting both TFVC type repositories as well as Git based repositories. Uh, GitHub on the other side has Git repos.
Azure has Azure Pipelines, and Azure Pipelines has the legacy editor, which has a UI that allows you to create pipelines uh, with a UI over them. And then a new experience for YAML-based pipelines, which is pipelines as code. GitHub on the other side has GitHub Actions, and GitHub Actions has a whole library of open source and product provided uh, actions that allow you to automate everything and pretty much anything. Azure has Azure test plans, and test plans have the ability for you to create uh, test management and test suites that you could run your regression tests on. GitHub doesn't really provide a capability for manual testing. Azure has Azure Artifacts, and Azure Artifacts can be used for privately hosting your NuGet, NPM, Maven packages, and Universal packages as well. GitHub on the other side has GitHub Packages, which provides very similar capability. Azure has Azure Wiki, GitHub has GitHub Wiki, and both provide a, a markdown experience which spans across the product. Azure provides Azure reporting and Azure dashboards. GitHub on the other side provides GitHub Insights. Now, if you're a developer uh, who's starting with DevOps, you would look at capabilities of an IDE and how well they integrate into the DevOps toolchain. Both Azure DevOps and GitHub have native integration across most and pretty much all of the IDEs that are out there. In addition to that, Azure DevOps provides Visual Studio Code Spaces, 
So you could, at a click of a button, set up a whole dev environment and get yourself started from code to uh, debugging in real no time. GitHub on the other side has GitHub code spaces providing the same experience. Let me double click and provide you my perspective. Azure DevOps is very much for organizations that embrace the inner source. Organizations that are moving the dial from not doing a lot of uh, DevOps to starting with DevOps because it really makes the experiences simple and quite secure for organizations that aren't accustomed to coding in the open source. GitHub on the other side is the perfect platform for organizations that embrace open source. Media companies, digital companies that like to operate and collaborate with open source providers. And that's where they can co-create and co-crop solutions with the support of the community. That's the key distinction I see between the two uh, products. Both the products have their own pricing and user licensing, which we'll go through in the later part of the video.